Hello everyone and welcome to Myth Brigade. I hope you are all staying safe, healthy, and sane during this trying time of quarantine and social distancing. I'm Jason, a resident GM here on the channel, and I'll be your host for this special episode of Rules Bites. So far, this series has been dedicated to breaking down the rules of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition by Cubicle 7. We've gone from basic die rolls to deeper concepts like magic and corruption. And we've definitely learned a lot along the way. Much of that from the growing Myth Brigade community. We've gotten a ton of feedback around the complexity of 4th edition, particularly combat, even compared to the beloved 2nd edition rules. So today, I thought we would step out of the rule book and take a deeper look at an essential shortcut for simplifying combat and speeding up the process overall. Now, this is not a sponsored video, but it does feature and depend on a paid Roll20.net subscription. If you're using Fantasy Grounds or another virtual tabletop, it's all good, but this won't be quite as helpful to you. If your application of choice offers plugins or other resources for fourth edition, though, please share that information in the comments below. One of our other viewers might find that really helpful. This is the part where people start waiting for it. This is usually the part where people start hating on Roll20. It's just that most of our players aren't. Some of our players are in Portland. Oh, man. Let's get busy. So we'll start out by creating a brand new campaign in Roll20. That way you get to see the entire process from scratch, and we'll both know that I haven't really fucked anything up. The process is actually pretty simple. You give your game a name. I usually like to name it after the campaign, you know, something kind of with some sizzle, not just Dungeons and Dragons or Star Wars. Uh, you know, give it a little flavor so that people looking at it in the list of available games are drawn to it. Um, you get to then add some tags if you want, make it easier to find your game in searches. Choose a character sheet, uh, which I do believe there is in fact a, a brand new Warhammer Fantasy 4th edition character sheet. Um, I'll choose this one because it's the one we're using in Tides of Nurgle and it's really not important for this episode. So look it all over and once you're happy, you're going to go ahead and click I'm ready, create game, and watch Roll20 do its magic. Voila, you have a blank slate to work with. You can flesh this out with a header image, a description, and other stuff, but for now, plain and empty will work out pretty well. From this view, you're going to click the settings button and then API scripts. Now remember, you need a paid account to unlock some of these options. So if you don't see the same list that I'm looking at here, with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. When you click API scripts, you're going to be confronted with this terrifying banner. Do not ignore the scary banner. No, really, believe it. The Roll20 API is super flexible, and you could nuke your entire game with a poorly written script. So always make a copy of your game before experimenting. We don't have anything important in ours yet, so I'm going to skip the backup step. But if you've done anything to yours, I highly recommend making a backup copy before you proceed. Now up at the top, you have two options. Select a script from a library of canned and presumably tested scripts, or bust open the JavaScript editor and get your code on. Now, when you select a pre-existing script, you get a summary and a rundown on all the functionality that that script offers. If you like what you see, just scroll down to the bottom and click Add Script. When the screen reloads, you'll note that you have a script showing here in your tabs, and there's a little bit of output in the API output console. If there is an error of any kind, you should see it here, but not all output is bad. Some scripts produce output just to tell you what they're up to, what version they are, and when they've completed doing something that they were trying to do. Computers do that stuff sometimes. There's a big blue button up here for reloading the API sandbox. This is basically a virtual environment with your combination of scripts running. Sometimes you need to restart to test a change or to recover from typing like this. Now in a perfect world, you'd be able to scroll down the API list, 
find the Warhammer 4th edition script, add it to your game, and get right into that scripted goodness. As of the making of this video though, adding it through the normal means actually produces nothing. Yeah, it's broke. If we go back to our console and take a look at what's going on here, uh, you'll notice this no implicit conversion of nil into string, which the point is it's broken. And this could happen to any script as Roll20 evolves. Authors of extensions really have to keep up with that evolution and accommodate for any platform changes or API changes. But day jobs get in the way, people get bored, things get broken. So I'm gonna show you a workaround that will get you up and running despite this flaw. First, let's get rid of our broken scripts because a bad enough error in one can prevent others from loading correctly. So let's open this script. Now, if you're trying to troubleshoot, you can actually disable the script, which will take it out of memory effectively so that it's not conflicting with other things that are going on. I'm gonna go ahead and delete though, just to get it out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and get rid of ammo as well. And for that, we'll have to scroll to the bottom because there's a lot of description there. All right, now sandbox will reload, but you will see this scary error here. What this is really telling you is, hey, I tried to load the sandbox, but there wasn't really any script for me to run. So something's wrong. Um, but since we don't have any scripts, nothing's wrong. We just need to give it something to think about. So to get to the Warhammer 4th edition goodness, uh, we're gonna click on the new script tab and dive right into the blank JavaScript editor where we can literally code ourselves straight into the apocalypse. Ready? I'm kidding. If you're familiar with JavaScript, Roll20 has an awesome API document that will have you automating things in no time. Those who are not, or if you're like me and you know JavaScript, but you're pretty lazy, there's an easier way. In a new tab, navigate to the Roll20 API repository on GitHub. Now, if that sounds like orcish to you, GitHub is essentially an online version control system, and a repo is just a bucket of code. I've included links in the description to make getting there a little easier, or you can just type the URL as you see it here on the screen. So once we're loaded up, you'll see all of the API scripts available for Roll20, and there are so many of them. You're gonna scroll down until you get to WFRP4E. That's quite a scroll, but don't scroll too far. Once you see it, you're gonna go ahead and click the link. And this is gonna open the repo and show you the files inside. Now, from the bottom up, the script JSON file just contain some stuff about this script's title, the version, and the author. Quick shout out, by the way, to Seth Williams for coding this. Thank you so much, man. Um, but you really don't need this file beyond understanding what it is that you're dealing with in terms of the script itself. The WFRP4E.js file contains the code that we're going to need to make all the magic happen. And help.txt is a super brief command reference for the script. Now don't worry about that though, because we've got you covered with a little bit of a surprise at the end of this video. So for now, you're going to click the title of the JS file to load the code. The default view in GitHub is really great for reading the code if you're savvy. Trusting that all is well though, we're gonna go ahead and click the raw button. And what this is gonna do is give us plain text and get rid of all the markup. Now this is very important so that we can make sure that we're copying only what we need. Next, we're gonna select the entire file using Command A on a Mac or Control A on a Windows, or you can swipe um, either way, you're going to copy the code into your clipboard. Then return to the Roll20 code editor, and you're gonna go ahead and paste that code in. Now be careful not to alter any of the code once it's in here, unless you're really familiar with JavaScript and you're ready for a debugging nightmare. Finally, go ahead and scroll back up in this window and name your file something that you will remember. 
I wouldn't recommend naming it something that could obviously be duplicated though. And knowing that these scripts are being written, somebody else might very well bring in a file called um, WFRP4E. So let's just add something to the end. You can name it after your campaign or whatever. The name doesn't matter. Then you scroll down and you click save script. If everything worked as expected, you will see your sandbox start up with no errors. You may see some yellow logging text from the different modules that you've loaded. So here you can see that's the character sheet we loaded with our campaign, telling us when it was last updated and that sort of thing. Bottom line here is we didn't see an error, so we should be good to go with our API. Now, getting this set up may seem like a lot of trouble, but believe me, it will save you a lot of page flipping when the critical hits and fumbles start to fly. The Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition Combat Script has got a handful of useful functions. Determining critical hit location, uh, two flavors of rolls for critical hit results, and a couple of ways to roll for a fumble. Now, we've created this handy dandy command reference for you, and you can download it and share it as a handout to your players in Roll20, print it and laminate it, or tattoo it on your forum. Really, whatever works for you, it is yours for free. Link in the description below. For now, let's walk through that and uh, use the Roll20 chat window to see how the scripts work. First up is critical hit location. So you've made an attack roll and it's a critical success. So following the core rules, you need to make a roll to determine the location for that critical wound. Now you can automate this by typing an exclamation mark, which will always trigger a script, followed by crit loc and the enter key. Roll 20 will make the D100 roll necessary and then return the location in the chat window for all to see. In this case, it was a roll of 65% and your blow strikes your opponent's body. Now, keep in mind, the first time you use the API, it may take a couple of seconds before your result returns. This is because the sandbox is spinning up in the background and provisioning the scripts that you have assigned to it. So next up, logically, we have a critical result. As before, you begin that command with an exclamation mark, followed by crit and the body part that you hit. So in this case, it was body. Let's do a crit body, crit body and hit enter. So now Roll20 has made a D100 wall and returned the result of 68 arterial damage. Gain four bleeding conditions until you receive surgery. Every time you receive damage to the body hit location, gain two bleeding conditions, take three wounds. Bottom line is... Let's just do a couple of other examples so we can get used to that. We'll do a crit arm. See what comes back, a jarred arm. Your arm is jarred in the attack. Drop whatever is held in that hand and take one wound. What a jerk. I could do this all day. Crit leg. 50% says I've got a badly cut toe. Gain one bleeding condition. After the encounter, make a challenging or a plus zero endurance test. So you'll see here it's giving you all of the rules that you need to adjudicate this critical wound straight off of the tables, which is really handy. Now, this script is used when you don't yet have a critical result roll. If you already have the numbers, say from an external die roll or a house rule that lets you use another roll to drive the critical roll, you can specify that number like this. So we'll do crit head again, followed by, let's say I had rolled a 45. Any number will do between one and 100. And so it will take that, you see, as the uh, random result overriding that D100 roll. This time I got a sliced ear. The side of my head took a hard blow, cutting deep into my ear, gained two deafened and one bleeding condition. Take two wounds. I can't wait to do this to the characters in the Tides of Nurgle. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. but So in any case, adding a number at the end negates that D100 roll, takes the table result you specify. I do find this really handy when playing at a table with dice. It gets me out of the book and gets me the results I'm looking for very quickly. Finally, we have the dreaded oops roll. Anytime your character fumbles and your GM calls for an oops roll, simply use the exclamation point to start a script and then put in the command oops. 
Roll20 will return the result in all of its fail-tastic splendor. In this case, I misjudged my maneuver, leaving me out of position, or maybe I lost the grip on my ranged weapon. So next round, I'm actually gonna suffer a penalty. Now, note that if you're using external dice, you can also use, oops, with an external roll. As always, this overrides the randomization and uses the value that you provide as the table lookup. While this script doesn't automate every role in the game, or even every role in combat, it lets you enjoy all the grim, gritty detail provided by the critical-based combat system without all of the page turning and the painstaking table lookups. Now GMs, even if you're not regularly using Roll20 to all of its potential, you can leverage this capability on your computer, an iPad, or a phone just to speed up the process a little bit and get yourself out of the book. And as we saw earlier, you can combine scripts from the Roll20 library or even ones of your own design to make similar time-saving tools for your campaign. All right. There we have it. Your questions about the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition scripts for Roll20 have been answered. Next week, we'll take a look at a couple of different options for character sheets inside of Roll20, and then dive back into the rules for a look at weapons and armor. Thanks as always for checking out our channel. Please, tap the thumbs up below and dropkick the living shit out of that subscribe button. We're driving toward that 1,000 subscriber mark, and it's viewers like you that are helping that happen. Stay active in the community for a chance to win some Myth Brigade merch, and, well, just because it's the right thing to do, you know, if you like gaming and stuff. Other people like gaming. Until next time, may all of your scripts be free of errors and actually work when you want them to. No, just pull the... put the...